Hi, I'm Will from Testin. I'm Norm from Testin. Norm, it's Retina MacBook Pro Day. We have one, we've been actually using it as a real computer. In production. In production, meaning yeah. Joey, who's shooting this right now, right. has used this to edit, video, edit videos on trips. We've been using it for photo processing. Uh -huh. Actual have mountain line on this because yep. when this came out, there was no mountain line. Nope. And we finally have uh, some real opinions about it. We have we have decided what we think about it. Yes. Uh, uh, I use it to edit video. You, even Will could edit video with Final Cut 10x on this. iMovie Pro. iMovie Pro. Okay. So you have used this more than the rest of us at yeah. this point. Uh, it is what Apple calls the next generation, the future of the MacBook Pro line. Okay. So while Apple still sells the traditional MacBook Pros, uh, 15 inch, 13 inch, mm -hmm. no more 17 inch. This kind of slotted into the top top end. Okay. It's a very expensive MacBook Pro. The base starting price is twenty two hundred dollars. Why is it so expensive, Norm? Well, the first of all, it's all solid state. Okay. All flash. Storage, no moving parts. No moving parts. Well, a couple of fans probably. Right. It starts off with a base eight gigs of RAM. Okay. Which is okay. That's pretty nice. Two hundred and fifty six gigs of flash storage. Their fastest SSD right now. Okay. Which, if you were on like a MacBook Pro seventeen inch before, mm -hmm. and you do video editing and you're just working within that confines of the two hundred gigs you're going to notice the speed. You're going to okay. notice the speed in day-to-day. -day. I mean, I found, because I put uh, SSDs in a couple of Macs at this point, mm -hmm. I have found that even on an old-ass old Mac, you put an SSD in, you notice immediately, immediately. that it boots really yeah. fast, yep. everything is better. So all the advantages of the SSD that we've seen from the MacBook Airs, you're going to get that here. Because of that, it's also thinner, has integrated battery, but it's also called the MacBook Pro with Retina. Because well, there's no optical drive either. No optical drive. Either. Yeah, they did take away some things. They, we'll took, they, to took, they took. Let's talk about the other stuff they took away. This is important. No optical drive. No Ethernet. No Ethernet port, and no FireWire ports. Wait, what? So for video editors, you have to buy an adapter for Ethernet, buy an adapter for FireWire, all through the Thunderbolt. Port. The Fire, the Ethernet adapter is out now. It's thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. You can get a Display Port. You can plug Display Port monitors directly into that, or yep. use a Display Port to DVI adapter to plug your external monitor in. Right in the Thunderbolt. But there's no FireWire adapter yet. No. So when we yeah. went on a trip and we wanted to edit and we wanted to import video straight from a professional video yeah. camera, what were we? We were screwed. Yeah, totally yeah. screwed. And uh, but they will sell, and it might by the time you watch this, they might be available a FireWire adapter uh, for Thunderbolt. Okay, that seems like a reasonable thing to sell. What you're really paying for with that $2,200 starting price tag is this new display. Okay. It's a 2880 by 1800 resolution IPS LCD. Good golly, Norm. That's almost the resolution of my desktop 30-inch monitor. That's bigger than the resolution, higher resolution than my wow, 20, it is. 2560 by 1600 desktop monitor, which... But it's so small. Why do you need so many pixels? Well, uh, Apple does something interesting with in both line and mountain line. Okay. They call it scaling. They call it retina scaling. Marketing. So, well, absolutely marketing. Uh, what happens is that the past 15 inch monitors were at 1440 by 900 resolution. Okay. And if you open up the new MacBook Pro with Retina, you're going to see basically the desktop look exactly the same in terms of what size your icons are, what size text looks like, because 2880 by 1800 it's like this. is four times the number of pixels. It's Four of these, one quarter of the screen mm -hmm. is the same number of pixels as on the old display. And so what it's doing is basically scaling a 1440 by 900 desktop mm -hmm. all the way to 2880 by 1800 pixels. Oh, for most, for the most part. For the most part. Yeah. As a result, in your, all your desktop elements, all your dialog windows, in Finder, you know, in, in most of iWork stuff right mm -hmm. now you will see really sharp UI elements. The, the text chrome. looks really good. The UI yeah. chrome is what yeah. we call that. But you're not going to have you know, any necessarily any more uh, desktop space for icons and, and folders and stuff unless you shrink the icons. So why does Apple want to charge you a whole lot more money for a monitor that's huge, mm -hmm. resolution, packed into 15 inches, but acts like a 1440 by 900 display? Because that seems crazy. It seems like you're paying a lot of money for sharper text. Yes. Well, you might not necessarily I don't care that text. much about sharper text. Well, in some of the programs that support it, in some of the apps like mm -hmm. Aperture, like in Final Cut 10, uh, even though the UI looks sharper and the DPI settings are that the text looks sharper and the icons don't look super small. So the UI still looks the same size as it always did. As in a 1440 by 900 okay. display. Anything that renders photos or video is smart enough to take advantage of all those pixels and the pixel oh. density. So, so if I look at it like a 17 megapixel photo yes. in Aperture, even though the window is 1440 by 900, it'll actually display the native resolution of the, of the image or closer to closer it. Closer to it. So the best example is a 1080p video. Okay. If you're editing in I, or iMovie Pro, 
Final, Final Cut, Cut Pro, Pro 10. 10. Uh, your UI elements are going to be normal size. They're not going to be tiny. You're not going to need, need a super high DPI mouse to move around. Yeah, because it, it would be really hard to pick the right spot on the timeline, get frame accuracy right. and all that stuff. But in your preview, when you have a window, you can actually see all the pixels of your video. Even all, if it's all, 1080p? Even if it's 1080p that within crazy. the preview video. Crazy. So for photo editors and video editors, potentially very, very useful because you, can, you don't lose any image quality. You said it was good for video editors, mm -hmm. and it is good for Final Cut Pro 10. I've used it, I like it. Final Cut Pro 7, which is the old version, yep. no longer updated, old timelines. It's what Joey uses and a bunch of film editors and, and people who are much more talented at video editing than yep. I am use. How does it work with the Retina Max So Pro? that hasn't been updated to work with scaling. So the UI elements look fuzzy, and this is what happens with a lot of programs. Anything that's unsupported. Anything that's a third-party developed program that isn't updated, it hasn't been updated yet. Okay. The UI will think it's 1440 by 900 mm -hmm. and will just scale up. So because the screen is actually 2880 by 1800, you get a lot of dithering in the text. So on places where traditionally you'd have sub-pixel anti-aliasing on the text that yeah. makes the, the corners look smoother, mm -hmm. it just looks blocky and kind of yeah. fuzzy it, and it, bad. Uh, it, it scales up to 1440 by 900 and thinks that's fine, but really needs to scale up more. And it just hasn't done that yet. So okay. dialog boxes, not just icons, text in dialog boxes and menus. I feel like there should be a big boom now because I don't understand what you just said, but it doesn't look as good. It doesn't look as good. Right. So uh, there are a bunch of features here um, that are all that sh are shared with the new MacBook Airs. Okay. For example, you have USB three. So it's Ivy Bridge. There's Ivy Bridge. It's a 2.3 gigahertz quad core Ivy Bridge processor, okay. which is really really fast. Uh, compared to like the MacBook Air, yeah. uh, it's the, the new MacBook Air, 13 mm -hmm. inch. It's about 15 percent faster in our GarageBand test. So single threaded app. Single threaded, and for something that actually takes advantage of all of those threads, all the, all the cores, like uh, Final Cut Pro 10. Yeah. Uh, it's about Three times as fast. In our oh, that's test. good. Yes. So, so you don't quite. Yeah, I mean, you don't never see four, four to one improvement, mm -hmm. but that's still quite good. Yep. Um, uh, you have improved uh, USB three ports. Uh, the SD card slot reads perfectly, um, and then also it has Nvidia's new Kepler mobile chip. Okay. So it's a 650M, and what surprised me the most is that you can actually do a lot of gaming on this. In OS 10 or on Windows? In both. Okay. So uh, in OS 10 and in Windows, if you load on Steam, you know, you can download something like a casual game like The Walking Dead. Right. And that is not very graphically intense. You can scale that up to 2880 by 1800 and it will run perfectly smooth and honestly, it's the best I've seen that game anywhere. Well, it's about iPad, higher than high def resolution. Yeah, you don't need to have anti-aliasing on at all because there are no jaggies at that resolution. And did, were you able to read the UI elements with yes, that? Yes, okay. perfectly. So they scaled yeah. up naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Blizzard games support the yeah, retina resolution? So Blizzard games do in some way. So Diablo and StarCraft do go up to 2880 by 1800. Mm -hmm. The text looks really small in some, UI, in some of the UI, but it's not uh, rendered poorly. So it's just okay. really sharp and really small. So as long as you squint your eyes a bit, you can see it. Uh, something like StarCraft, I could play a competitive game. Uh, really? Maxed out. Ultra settings, and you would get you know StarCraft Two. StarCraft Two. Okay. At 30 FPS, if you want to turn to medium settings, you'll get up to closer to 50, 60 FPS, and it'll be really playable. So competitive. Yeah. It is actually you can actually good play. And uh, what happens when you go to Windows? If you go to Windows, you get just about the same frame rate. You uh, actually, I like the uh, the UI rendering in Windows a little more. The desktop rendering. So so everything's tiny in Windows. When Everything you, when is you tiny. Over, it right? actually uh, scales to 150 percent. So not 100% because things will be okay. really tiny. And you can actually manually change that to 200% scaling. So it's just like the 1440. So it's one to one, basically. 1440 to 2x scaling. Right. That's like uh, in Mac OS X. Chrome, Firefox, they don't work well in Windows. Right. IE kind of works. Text works well, uh, reads well. But I don't like using IE, I like using Chrome. So I'll wait until Chrome actually works. OK, so if I'm going to go buy a laptop today, this is an expensive laptop. It's $2,200 yeah. base. Base. And that's only. With yeah. 256 gigs of storage. So I mean, the nice thing is with USB 3, I've even found that you're able to take a relatively inexpensive external drive mm -hmm. as long as it's 7200 RPMs, and it's almost like being connected internally. Yeah, there aren't it's enough. Really fast. There aren't enough Thunderbolt drives out right now. Yeah. that you can use that as a dedicated system unless you invest in the RAIDs and and all those server boxes. Mm -hmm. Another twelve hundred dollars, basically. Exactly. At that point, spend the money and get the 700 gig flash drive because you want that on board. I'm dual booting right now with Mac and Windows. There's not enough storage space with 256 gigs to have both OS X and Windows and games on either of those. So you have to commit one way or the other. Exactly. Um, what about photo editors? Uh, photo editors, uh, Aperture works well. Photoshop works perfectly. Okay. I actually like using uh, using the Preview app uh, in Windows, 
browsing through my photos, sorting through my Comic-Con photos, and just being able to see, you know, when you take a dozen photos of one scene and you want to quickly filter out which ones are blurry and which ones aren't, having that 2880 by 1800 resolution makes it so easy. Makes a big difference. To just quickly scroll through, find the sharpest photo and save that one and delete the one you don't want. If you're just a normal general purpose computer user, I, mean, yeah. I think video editors, I think if, especially if you use Final Cut Pro 7, you probably want to stay away from this for right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a, just a normal user who's looking for a really nice laptop, yep. go with this, go with the Air, go with the old MacBook Pro, buy something else entirely, what do you think? It all depends on whether you've been traveling a lot and whether you actually need that horsepower when traveling. It's four and uh, a half pounds? It's four and a half pounds, which you know I've been holding this whole time and it doesn't feel heavy and a shoulder bag doesn't feel heavy. Uh, definitely lighter than a 17-inch MacBook Pro or the old 15-inch MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. um, but you notice the difference if you're used to just carrying an iPad or a MacBook Air. And frankly, the MacBook Air works great on the road and in the office. This yeah. works better in the office. This is this is With more tethered of a desktop. storage. Yeah. This is a next-gen desktop replacement, yeah. kind of. And frankly, it works better at, uh, tethered to a desktop because of power also. So you're going to get, if you watch video like Flash video, HTML5 video, and web browsing about five hours of battery life. Okay. If it's you not wanna, bad, but it's not it's great. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, if you game on this, you're not gonna get more than three hours. Especially in OS and Windows. Especially in Windows. Oh, Windows because it doesn't take advantage of the built-in GPU, only uses the NVIDIA GPU. Okay. It actually cut uh, power, uh, battery lifetime down about 10% compared to Mac OS X my test. It also gets very, very hot, especially if you have a lot of, uh, using all the cores or if you're using the GPU at it seems, percent. It seemed to me like the GPU was much worse. When yeah. I was doing video renders, it didn't get that hot. Mm -hmm. When I was playing a game, it got crazy yeah. hot. If you put on Team Fortress 2, which actually did crash for me a couple of times, mm -hmm. even if you put on something like StarCraft or The Walking Dead, using the keyboard, you'll notice your fingers get really, really hot. So. I think that this is a real limited recommend right now. If your photo editor may make sense, yeah. but for normal human beings, I would say wait until the software catches up. And it, I mean, that could be six months, it could be a year, it could be three months from now, we don't really know. And by then, they you know, might add more storage or it might or, be cheaper. Or it may be available in a different class of laptop entirely. Exactly. So for Tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.